Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crime. How about we do a little roll, do a little bit of roll in the day? How about that? We do some roll in the day. So if we don't roll today, I figure we'll start kind of where it started at with the fat man, Eddie Jackson. You understand that? That is truly the motherfucking beginning of all of it for me. You understand? Is the fat man. So I figured I'd start y'all off rolling, telling, telling y'all about him, which was the originator. Eddie Jackson was known as the, or the originator. This is a picture of his jailhouse crew. You understand? Like I said, when he go to penitentiary, wasn't no motherfucking snitching. It's time to take that over. You understand? So that's why I'm so hard on snitches. My father died in jail with a 60-year sentence for a non-violent crime and never told on nobody, not one person ever. So let's start a little roll in the day with him, and I was thinking, this is John Classen. This is who put my father on first. This is the man we owe a gratitude of thanks to, John Classen. That was the man. He is John Classen. That's who put us on to start all of this. So if we was going back to the beginning, he is the beginning, John Classen. And this is just a picture of our home in Southfield, me and Trisha playing around on the Rolls Royce. You understand? Just to let you take a look at that, this is me and my sister as kids playing on the Rolls Royce. Now, we're going to roll today. If we're going to roll today, we need to start by telling you all Ryan Gill Valley was the federal officer who took my father down. He has a story on Crime Town, which is on Spotify. Our episode was Kingpin Kids. You can hear Ryan Gill Valley in there tell you some of the things I'm finna tell you right now. So if you go to Spotify, you can hear the actual FBI officer confirm and tell you what I'm finna tell you on Spotify, Crime Town, Kingpin's Kids. Now, let's go over on Hubble, which is where the biggest raid in Detroit history for a long time took place. Ryan Gill Valley will tell you that, and probably all time for the best dope. You understand? Half of that shit they have now wouldn't get a fly high. So for 100% hair, Ryan, let's go into the story. They was at Hubble and Ryan, Gill Valley, and his federal team sprung their trap and raided. The fat man jumped up, turned the table over with all the hair, Ryan, on it because they was hooking up. The dope had just came in off the East Coast. So they hooking up in the feds raid because Reggie wasn't paying attention and did not give them enough time to get the dope in the stash. So when the police rushed, the fat man just take the table over and throw all the dope everywhere. All, and you listen at this on Crime Time, Spotify, all the officers got hot and was throwing up. The dope was so good and he threw it on the floor. The dope was so good they was throwing up and they was sick. And they put an ass whooping on him for that. Ask Ryan Gill Valley to tell you that part of the story too. How they put an ass whooping on him behind that. For them motherfuckers throwing up and almost ODing and shit. These are federal officers he did that shit too. Know that and hear it out of the federal agent's mouth. Not just mine. This book here. This right here. This is... The case log and the win for that particular case for the biggest raid of heroin in Detroit's history. Ron Gill Valley. You understand? 100% heroin. Our federal officers throwing up on itself. You understand? Now let's go into it a little more if you really want to know. The fat man was the originator. One of the first to do it with all of them. To plug Many niggas in the town. As I said to y'all, Chad Crawford, Mississippi Clay. You understand? 
whole list of them. So many, a motherfucker can't even name Demetrius Holloway. The list goes on. Pep. Many motherfuckers he put on and let make some money. You understand? That's how the fat man felt like Muhammad Ali. You get a fight with Muhammad Ali, you know you had made it. You rolling for Eddie Jackson, you know you had made it. You understand? That's how he was. You know you had made it when you was fucking with the fat man, and that's for real. Going on down the road, letting you all know, this this book here, this, 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 this book, Henry Rothblatt, Milton Henry, some of the greatest lawyers ever to live, in a day, my father, for this case, to get to get this case to the Supreme Court, for them to even hear the case, cost you $250,000. That's for the Supreme Court just to hear the case. That's what it costs you. We ain't talking about no lawyers, no leader, just to get the case heard in front of the Supreme Court. Cost you $250,000. Now, put the lawyer fee with that. Put the fee for 32 defendants and put it over an eight year span. And Eddie Jackson easily spent 10 to 12 million dollars on this case. Anybody, any man's known. In the beginning of this case, let me take you to the beginning. In the beginning of this case, Cornelius Pitts started it. Cornelius Pitts was the first lawyer to go up there and try to get a, a, a fair lead out of jail. Cornelius Pitts was the first lawyer on this case right here. This very case right here, Cornelius Pitts started it. You understand? That's the start. It was a long motherfucking hard battle throughout it. So, yeah, he used many lawyers. You understand? He used Cole Pepper long before Butch Jones and that old fucked up ass nightmare of a young boy crew. You understand? Cole Pepper and my father said it then and said it best. Cole Pepper ain't nothing but a cop lawyer. That's it. If you need a trial lawyer, don't look for him. You better go look for Cornelius Pitts. You better go look for Steve Fishman. And if you could, you better go dig Henry, Milton R. Henry up. And if you was really lucky, go grab my man. You understand? Number one. Roth Black, Mr. Roth Black, you understand? That's that's the baddest lawyer my father say he ever came in contact with. When he ran out of money, he's fighting an 848, you understand? That was the charge on him. That's a life charge. It's an 848. He fighting that. He got Ross Black and Milton Henry in there clowning, you understand? They broke an 848 down from life to seven years. My father did seven years for the case, but I done told y'all he spent easily $10 million for the case over eight years. He stayed out on an appeal bond from the day after this raid for eight years. After he got raided on this Hubble case. Then he caught throughout this time another case on Pennsylvania Turnpike with a trunk full of dope with Trooper Wynn. You understand? He caught another case throughout after this with Trooper Wynn running up to New York with a trunk full of money Trooper Wynn stopped him with a million dollars going and stopped him with the goddamn dope coming back. He went up there, spent a million dollars, came right back in the same car, Teresa's Mach 1 Mustang, Teresa's Brown. He was driving her Mach 1 Mustang. And he had that motherfucker wide open and got stopped going by Trooper Wynn and the same officer heard him coming back. He said, I heard you miles away. You was humming. You understand? Now here's a motherfucker with a trunk full of dope speeding. You know he's a freshman at that point. All the way a freshman, you understand. So you understand, them mistakes cost you dearly and you pay for them if you got some money and want your life. You understand. So when I talk about the originator, the fat man, no, oh, that's the one. Go all the way back with all of it. And a motherfucker you can't name in the city of Detroit and in the game of dope that the fat man didn't know and know pretty well most of them. As I say, love Richard Wakefield. That was his man, the penguin, you understand? Richard is a motherfucker. So the fat man always, Demetrius, his heart and soul, you understand? So the fat man always kept his glove in the game, you understand? Even during 60 years of penitentiary, he knew everything that was going on all the time. And as I say to George Black, you in this book right here, George, if I want to turn to the page and show you the actual person who bought 
the FBI officer to Hubble that day that this book is, is George Blair's name is in here. That's why I say to you, Mr. George Blair, you right here in the book, man. They tell exactly what you did. That's the insanity of it. You know, and the fat man still forgave you. Go ahead and give me some action, D. I'm telling you, the nigga a rat a snitch. Man, if that nigga do any of that, I'm going to close the door on that motherfucker. I promise you, Eddie. And that's why Demetrius gave George Blair some action. George act like a motherfucker. He was doing something a motherfucker didn't know about. As I told y'all, before he's sitting over there in Sweetheart, running the whole house, you couldn't do nothing but buy the dope there. You couldn't leave with it. You had to smoke it as long as you tricked with the women. You couldn't buy no cane in this whole house and leave with it. You had to stay there and smoke it. And he thinking somebody didn't know what he was doing. Man, niggas knew what you was doing. Every step you was making, brother. Wasn't no motherfucker slow, man. Niggas was fast. And if my had really pressed, man, don't get that motherfucker no action, he wouldn't have. But he had a heart towards you, man, because he remembered you, George, as the motherfucker who blocked the police with your hoes for him to get away. He always had a soft spot for you for that reason. That's why he loved George Blair. George Blair was a pimp out there, had all the hoes on the stroke. And then on top of that, another thing he loved George Blair for, George Blair Ho is the very woman who turned him on to Henry Roth Black. It was one of George Blair White Hoes who told my father, you talking all that, if you got some money and you want fairly out of jail, go get Henry Roth Black. And that was George Blair's women, his stable of women, who told my father that. So that's why he was dear to George Blair because of that too. But still at the same time, he knew the nigga was a rat. This is Eddie Jackson, Real True Street Crime, telling you all to like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe. I appreciate you all, and I'm going to keep the stories coming. Peace and love, and get out and vote.